One of the big problems that we have with ventilation is the control of it because if you're not gonna just set it and forget it, which is by the way, how I run my house and how I normally recommend that people run it in a very airtight situation, more and more people are trying to decide on ventilation for healthy home reasons, and they might not have an airtight home. In which case, if you ventilate the way that something like ASHRAE 62.2 standard, which I'm linking a video on screen right now, uh, explains that you need this many CFM, if you have a very air leaky house, it's possible that you're getting more than enough air leakage to make up all of the ventilation that you need. And so we either need to become a submarine captain and be running around adjusting dials and tweaking things all the time, uh, at least season per season or every couple months, or we could do something like this. So I got permission to repost this presentation by two of my friends, Kevin Hart, not the comedian, the Canadian, and Tim DeStazio, both of whom have been on this channel uh, multiple times, I believe. So um, I'm gonna show you what they have come up with. This is a solution called Haven. I have one of these installed in my house and I do not use it to control the ventilation. This is a new thing that they have developed. They came out with just a sensor that you embed in your uh, HVAC and it can t sense temperature, humidity, even air flow velocity basically, I think is what they're uh, measuring there. They can do things like start to monitor for when the pressure starts increasing because of your filter getting clogged. So they can tell you when it's time to uh, change your filter. Those kinds of things are all very nice. They also can monitor things like air pollution. And so then they can make some decisions based on that to control the ventilation. And this was apparently always part of the plan. Uh, this was ex It was explained to me early on when I got the sensor that this would ultimately be the, the end game. And so here we have the actual implementation of this. They've just rolled this out. And what we have is, this is not the sensor, this is the controller. So it's just a, basically a wiring block that communicates with the cloud so that you can control it via an app. Uh, all you're doing on these ventilation devices, dehumidifiers, ERVs, your air handler even for your heat pump or your forced air furnace, is making closed circuits to make things go. And polarity doesn't really matter. All you're trying to do is connect wires, disconnect wires. And that makes all the parts of it, it's basically light switches, right? So uh, when we're trying to connect this together, it's pretty simple. Uh, there will be power users, and both of these guys are on board with that. On this channel, I'm considering a series where we come up with weird ventilation setups that we might want to do on certain, one, you know, client homes that come to me that are like really interesting or weird. And I might go ahead and give you the setup on how you would do the Haven uh, setup on this and the wiring. But there's a lot more to it than just the wiring. You have schedules. So the app, you can tell it, hey, from listen, from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m., nobody's in my house, like Tim DeStazio set up. Uh, I don't want you ventilating. I want you ventilating a minimal amount so that we can save most of the ventilation for when we're at home, asleep and not moving from our bedroom, in which case I want you to ventilate a lot in that bedroom. So there's ways that you can mess, make up with this. By the way, the schedule part of this is that uh, ASHRAE 62.2, starting in 2019, allowed for you to start doing time weighted. So you can get like the full day's ventilation out of a couple hours. As long as you're ventilating for a certain amount each hour and a certain amount each day, then you can do that. Interlocks, meaning, for example, you have the dehumidifier kick on, but the air handler is not on. I want, if my dehumidifier is running, I want my air handler also to be running to make sure that the air from the dehu is running in the same direction that it should be and that it's mixing with other air from the house so that it's not coming out full 15 degrees hotter than it breathed in. Uh, ERV, likewise, you want when the ERV runs, especially in a not airtight house, you won't be having your ERV run 24 seven, maybe. You might wanna just do demand controlled ventilation, which is what this really does. Dual activations, I want you with one if then to turn on two things. Escalations, if you're on, but then we sense that the pollution level is still rising, there's more, even more people in the house than we thought. I want you to kick it up into a second level. And then limits. For example, a classic one of these, which I actually think is kind of dangerous, is saying if the outdoor temperature is X or above, meaning it's very hot, then I do not want my exterior dampers to open up for my ERV or for makeup air. And that means that on a 100 degree day, I won't have any makeup air for my kitchen exhaust hood 
and I will depressurize my house massively potentially just because I'm trying to save my house on heat. And I think that that's where the, the main issue that I'm gonna to get to here in a minute with this particular approach comes in is that we're, we're having to load a lot of concept into this as well. You have to not just understand how to wire this thing and what the capabilities of it are as far as technical ability, but also you need to be really good at programming this stuff. So the applications that they're thinking of, basic setup, humidity control, dehumidifier control, right? And using the dehumidifier fan to maybe filter the air. Because for example, like a lot of dehumidifiers will come with a MERV 13 filter loaded into it. Maybe that's helpful for you. Because I have, for example, in my house, I have, I had, I disconnected it, a 300 CFM HEPA filtration unit from Fantech. It was a drop in the bucket, it turns out. But like magically, my dehu also happens to run 300 CFM. So if I was to use that to run a MERV 13, is that getting in the neighborhood of what the HEPA at 300 CFM is going to do? They're, they're, it's a different conversation, but like honestly, it's such a low flow that it doesn't matter in most houses. Demand controlled ventilation. That's what I've been addressing, where you um, are dealing with pollution as it happens in the house. And by the way, one example of how this conceptually is going to be problematic is that it's even better, in my opinion, then demand controlled, meaning reactive to pollution levels in the house. Once the pollution levels in the house go up, my system says, oh, we got to take care of this. And now you're chasing pollution for a long time. What if you had occupancy sensors? And when a lot of people came into the house, an infrared sensor or an occupancy sensor or something, a heat sensor, can tell that there's a lot of people in this room and we preemptively boost the ventilation. Now you're not chasing pollution with ventilation. You're getting out in front of something. And I think that that's better. Demand controlled filtration, obviously same kind of setup. And 62.2, which is ASHRAE standard that I mentioned already. The advanced applications that we're thinking of are intermittent multi-speed. That's what I was addressing with this scheduling thing where you can ventilate just the minimal amount here, but then maximize it in the evening or at night when you're home. Fresh air damper and strict outdoor limits. That's what I mentioned about your makeup air. I'm kind of against strict outdoor limits. And that goes for ERV too, I think. If you've got an ERV and you're using it for bath exhaust, you don't want it turning off on the coldest day of the year while your ERV is like, oh no, I've got really cold air coming inside. That's why we situate the ERV further into the house so that it gets a lot of passive bleed on the incoming air side. Um, there's all kinds of different tricks that you can see on this channel. And I'm not trying to get into all of them on this video. In fact, I've got a ventilation course that's a huge course. That's basically everything that I know about ventilation that I give to my clients. And you can sign up for that. I'm linking it on screen right now as well. But, I, but essentially what we're asking is that all these professionals who are gonna be using this system know uh, uh, essentially all of what I know. And I'm not even a brilliant person at this. I have no PhD, I have no master's degree. I just happen to have been thinking about this for eight years solid now and living with these systems. And I, I know that there are like certain little nuances that are not, not only not understood at the supply house or in HVAC companies, because they don't even really get the big stuff yet, unfortunately. But the nuance is not really understood by people who are actually really good at the theory, but they don't live with the systems. And I think that that's the thing is we got to get like all, you know, all of us who are talking about this have to be living with these systems for this really work. Radon and ventilation. This is something that's really cool. So one of the features of this system is that it can react uh, with other, it's called API, Application Programming Interface, I think is what it stands for. And it's a language of simple programming commands that uh, devices that are not related to each other can use to interface with each other. So you could give the API, and, and in fact, this. Basically, they have to develop this if it doesn't exist already. For a radon sensor to interact with the ventilation controller. And that is what this is getting at. So we can take now uh, the brain, which I have talked about like a, something like an April Air, a really cool thermostat that does all the things. It used to do heat bleed, moisture control, and uh, contaminant control. But now we can also add in this pressure relief thing. And that is something that we can really dig into with this because you could potentially get an API for a really finely tuned uh, manometer. 
and have it communicate with this ventilation control and say, ooh, the house has now gone depressurized. So those of you who are like real automation freaks and using home assistants to, to do this stuff, maybe take a look at this because I think that this holds potentially some very interesting possibilities. Hood fan triggers makeup air. This is something that my buddy Bill was talking about. It's a triangle. We gotta get the cooktop to talk with the exhaust hood to talk to the makeup air. The, we gotta have the whole triangle there. And uh, apparently he was at the Builder Show recently and asked, was asking around about this to like, cause we're all out there just hacking away with our machetes at the jungle of misinformation. And apparently GE for one said that, yeah, we've been having that conversation. We've been trying to work on that. Cool, great, I love that. CO2 in the bedroom. This right here, what I'll show you here, is a uh, Haven specific CO2 monitor for rooms. So now you could put one of those in the rooms that you're worried about and overnight it could say, hey, we need to run the air handler more or we need to introduce ventilation air and run the air handler or we need to do whatever. Um, this is something that I think room by room, the idea of putting a nose in every room is very useful because then it takes the responsibility off of the people with noses, which honestly our noses work better than machines. Like, let's be clear about that. But we don't wanna to have to go around submarine captioning everything. Humidifier fan plus outdoor temp limit and HRV, ERV. By the way, ERV is better than HRV in every single climate, period. I'm linking a video on screen if I have any room to link videos uh, anymore in this video on screen right now to explain that. An outdoor dew point limit is something that I think, you know, is useful to pay attention to. If you're not depending on this ERV to run your bath exhaust, then you can do other things with it. And it's good to just explore options. So uh, the wiring on all of this stuff, again, is something that we have to be able to do. And they've made this system a pro install design. So, so the, the way that normally this Haven system gets installed is a professional installs it for you. I think that it is super important for all of us to get up to speed on how this stuff is supposed to work because it is possible that the technician who gets into your house has never done this before. At which point he's taking the time to read a manual, at which point his boss is yelling at him because I don't pay you to read manuals, I pay you to do the, the sales stuff that I asked you to do. So just FYI, you know, like we should all understand more about this. But you can activate uh, things if then based on uh, all of this, uh, information that we're getting. The app ends up looking something like this when you have programmed it well. You've got all of these scheduling items. You've got all these if then, only if you can see over here, outdoor air quality index. And that's something that's from the cloud then through that kind of API uh, interface. So we're monitoring weather stations. We're monitoring indoor sensors. We're monitoring potentially your I don't know if you can monitor the thermostat or if this would potentially try to take some of the responsibility away from the thermostat. But this is kind of like a big open conversation. You can see all the things that are on this screen. And then of course, at the end, we wanna make sure that this thing is working well. And so testing it and seeing what it actually does. And this is information that can come straight out of this Haven app to show you what's going on, what your runtime is, how often your ventilation is running, et cetera. So I think that this cracks open one of the big problems that we've had, which is that we just didn't have a technology that was able to, to kind of bring all this in-house. I'm going to do a video soon about with uh, three of my freakiest uh, audience members who are really like into the technology and trying to wire up their own home. I believe that uh, a lot of them are using kind of off the shelf like Home Assistant, which I believe is an open source platform. And then things like Arduinos and little control modules and little tiny computers, which sounds to me like a lot of work. Like I'm, I know myself, three kids, I'm not gonna be programming computers and stuff. So if there's something that's off the shelf that normal professionals and normal homeowners can get a hold of and start to program and play with, I think that this is big. The next big hurdle, as I already mentioned, is that we have to understand how this stuff works, what impact it has. Has that air handler actually been measured? Has this, the actual airflow on it being measured? Do we have the static pressure data on that? The answer is no. So until we have a lot of that data on like what these systems are doing, knowing that the ventilation is running, knowing that the air handler is running is like one piece of data, but it doesn't actually tell us what's going on at all because we would have to know what happens when that thing runs. What is the zonal pressure that is induced in individual rooms when the air handler runs? Is that bad to have the air handler run and have doors be closed? These are all things that they are, we go into in depth on this channel. So please do subscribe if you're not already. 
Comment below if you have other things to add about things that you might already be using. There are probably some early adopters in our audience who have tried this already and are messing around with it. So please do add stuff like that. Uh, let me know if there's certain things that you wanna see in the series if we end up working together with Haven on the rest of this. Tune in next time.